we should be going live here momentarily. Yep, so that's why I have two minutes, two and a half minutes. Yeah, I think it's starting. Perfect. Is it? It's. How can I be behind you? Maybe I am. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Um, welcome. It's Candace Craw Goldman. Welcome to the quantumhealers.com YouTube channel. And thank you all for your patience with me as I do my very first setup of an event and then live stream with my good friend and colleague, uh, Shane Robinson. Hi, Shane. Yep, your sound's coming through good. We're, we're looking good. Perfect. Hello. How's it going, Candace? Always a pleasure. Oh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Shane. You know, I have uh, I have uh, something to admit. Uh -oh. I've been I've been so busy with uh, family obligations, caregiving, and just three D life stuff that I'm so far behind with so many of my good friends, including you. And I keep meaning and trying to watch some of your content. And I've only managed a little bit. And my solution to that is, heck, I'm just going to ask him to be on the show <laughs> and have him tell me about his content. So if, yeah. you're, if you're cool with that, that's what today's show is all about. I did watch your Mandela highlights about there was a 10 or 12 minute video show. And mm -hmm. I have lots of questions, but I know that uh, my followers and my community would like to catch up with you about all that's new, your book, uh, the Mandela conference that you have just returned from, I believe. I have lots of questions. So welcome, Shane Robinson, and i um, so happy to have you. Thank you so much, Candice. It's a pleasure to be here. So yeah, a lot going on with uh, just the topic of the Mandela effect in general, because, you know, I've sort of moved on to more spiritual things. Of course, lots of BQH sessions, which are a blast still the, up to this point, like the best choice that I've ever made to get into that, because it's such a cool thing that it's like you're really getting in contact with the other side at the same time as helping people and it's a beautiful thing but i've been pulled back to the mandela effect because we just finished our book of course today is the movie release the mandela effect movie actually comes out today on video on demand so anybody that has amazon i'm not sure where all you can watch it i didn't think i saw it on netflix but it was on amazon um for like you can rent it for seven bucks i think it's going to be in some theaters too i'm not really sure people can google that but it's out today what a synchronicity right <laughs> I had no idea. I have no idea about hardly anything, but I know what, what, what I do is I follow my energy, follow my heart, even when it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, to the people around me. So cool. Does the Mandela Effect movie have anything to do with the, uh, the conference that you were just at? No, it doesn't. But the conference was awesome. You know, that was November 8th through the 10th. And it was this, oh man, it was a, a super high vibe energy there. You know, you could, it was palpable. You could feel it in the room. Everybody I asked felt it and you could just feel tingles and you could feel just the joy people had that they could actually just have a regular conversation about these seemingly impossible changes to reality happening to people without being looked at like they're crazy and everything. So on that part, I guess that was part of the high vibe energy, but the group of, group of people that were there was just so awesome. In fact, they're gonna have a Mandela Effect Conference YouTube channel that they're gonna release our presentations on for free. And HBO was there as well. Um, and they're gonna be doing wow. some sort of show. I'm not really sure about that, um, but I know that's gonna be coming out. So there's a lot of momentum around this whole Mandela Effect. That's why I mentioned the movie coming out today. And then of course our book came out right before all of this happened. And just the timing of it is incredible, you know? <laughs> Well, you know, it may be incredible and exciting, but it's no coincidence. And I'm absolutely sure of that. And as I'm saying that, I'm getting my first real big body tingles as I say that. So um, I have some just real basic questions, if that's okay. So first off, yeah. how, uh, who put on the Mandela Effect Conference? Who, who was sponsoring it? Who, who was, whose show was this? Actually, uh, I think Dark Wolf's Den YouTube channel, Jerry Hicks, a good friend of mine. He's been, you know, I've known him since the very beginning in 2017 when I was first 
awakened to this whole thing happening and we were guests on a show together so i met him that way and then we've been on each other's channels and things like that so uh he i think had this idea it was in ketchum idaho at this sort of ski resort town and uh so you know he mentioned it to cynthia c larson who you know started helping out a lot with it and then I don't know if you guys know who Christopher Anatra is. He's the CEO of this software company that put this video out in the middle, I guess it was June of 2019, where he was explaining to his clients why they might see changes in their their information. Now, actually, you sent me that video. I did. <laughs> did. That, was, that was the business guy who yep. who like really put himself on the line and said, this is why your food orders are wonky, not because right. of, and, and for a CEO, I showed that to a bunch of 3D CEO people and they were like, oh, dude, man. He put himself that, out there. That's so amazing. I, that guy's a hero in my book. Me too. Yeah. He, and he is an excellent guy. You know, I did a little, I guess he's going to be releasing it on his channel. Now, anybody that wants to go to his channel that hasn't seen the video, it's the Quantum Businessman youtube channel and you can go there and you can see the video we're talking about but yeah he was explaining stuff like you know Haas avocados which was spelled h-a-a-s is now h-a-s-s and uh in fact i just i was reading this book and uh the guy said uh he was explaining something looked like a Haas avocado uh, moldavite crystal or something he wasn't impressed until he saw it in the light and i sent him the little screenshot of the book i was reading i'm like this guy remembers it the, the, the right way but people were asking why is there no uh, Stouffer stovetop stuffing anymore? Apparently, it's always been craft stovetop stuffing, which anybody who's done any sort of, I don't know, there's all sorts of recipes that actually call for Stouffer stovetop stuffing and Haas avocados, people will, will remember that name. And there's a number of things where people were like, why is this misspelled in our software, you know, on our spreadsheet or whatever it is? Because he, his software is for like suppliers for food distribution and things like that. So people were finding discrepancies, like, you know, something along the lines of, hey, you know, these people have been ordering 90 cases of this for, you know, years, and now it's saying that it was 100, or, you know, some different number, and then they go look at the, the hard copy papers, and they would have changed as well, yeah. and they're like, what's going on, and they're thinking it's a problem with the software, but no, it's this whole Mandela effect that, that's happening, and little shifts in reality. How cool, so he was there. Yes, he was one of the speakers as well. He was one of the speakers. Yeah. That, you know, that's what I, I wanted to know. Now, did anyone else who wrote this book with you come to speak or were you the only author of the co-author of this book that spoke? Yep, I was the only co-author. I was the only one that could make it to that one. Um, and uh, let's see, the other people that I didn't mention, Cynthia Sue Larson, of course, uh, a lot of people will know her from Quantum Shifts, Quantum Jumping. She's uh, been at this for since the 90s, I think, early 90s. Wow. She was a keynote speaker. And then Christopher Anatra was there. And then I got to meet uh, uh, Lauren Canal Pavelka, who was going through this health issue when she came across the whole Mandela effect. And I think one of her big ones was Joel Osteen, who <laughs> many people will remember was Joel Olstein with an L. With an L. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You bet. You're, so you're... and then and then this artist was there, uh, Kimberly Lynn Hansen. Uh, all of these people I've had on the show it was just a wonderful conference and the synchronicities were off the chain. I mean, it was like one, one presentation would lead into another and they were building on each other, but we didn't plan any of that. So even the, the, the order that we went in was so perfect. We could have never planned it to go as well as it did. It was, you know, it was completely designed from a higher level. You could tell, you know, amazing, amazing. So a few more real basic questions. Was this the very first one then? Yeah, this was okay. my very first time speaking, and this was the very first West Coast Mandela Effect conference. I think uh, there was there was another conference that uh, one of my co-authors, Vanessa VA, that put on real early on, I think in 2017, but that was on the East Coast. I'm not sure if it was a conference or just a get-together, because I didn't go to that one, so I'm not really sure, but we're trying to organize this to, to you know, have at least several a year, so we're really moving forward and trying to make this an international movement you know in different places then or you're going to go back to idaho or what we might go back to idaho but now i think the next one we're looking at is going to be in connecticut i believe and we're still looking on a date on that probably in april so well, yeah just yeah for people to keep their ears out because we're trying to move them around so it's not you know you don't have to drive so far or whatever sure, to get there sure. so about how many people attended the conference shane oh i would say 
between 50 and 60 or something like that. Nice. Really yeah. nice. A nice group. So it's not, it wasn't too big, but people could, could yeah. share stories and information. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's amazing. Um, I, I want to take a quick shout out to say hi to Cynthia Sue Larson and also Kim Schur, who I've been communicating with in my own way. And I didn't really know who Cynthia Sue was. And it's really crazy because you know what, if and then I have a question for you about a guest on your show that you said in your highlight reel. I was like, Kim, I'm friends with Cynthia Sue. And in my head, I'm like, and I know I've been friends with her for years. And Kim's like, no, just since the conference. And it has, it's only been since August, but maybe since the conference was planned. And I'm like, I have seen that name in my Facebook feed as my friend for years. And no. So there may be a Mandela effect right there and I'm, I'm catching up with Cynthia soon with Kim in that regard but I heard you say something like that there was a mystery in your highlight reel uh, somebody said I was in your show and you were like no nah, man I would have remembered that who was that and did you check and what happened there okay yeah that's a great question that was actually a guy named Scott he goes by uh, Guy Fox YouTube channel and uh, I've been, you know, watching him since the very beginning, b beginning, he, I think the thinker statue video of his that I watched, you know, he made a joke that he looks more like the dumper than the thinker now. And he just had me <laughs> laugh. I was just rolling, you know, and then I went as a guest on scare performance. Um, anybody in the Mandela effect community will be familiar with his channel. And when I was on as a guest with scare up, uh, Guy Fox was on there as well. So I thought he was maybe confusing that. And he goes, no, it was your channel. I'm like, no. I'm like, you know, I like him enough that there's just no way I would have just forgotten about it. And I follow him. I've been following him since the very beginning. So there's just no way I would have forgotten that. So um, I can't find the video of it. I don't, it must have been in his timeline or he jumped into mine. I don't know how it works, but <laughs> it I never happened it. for me. I, I love it. And that's funny. You should bring that up because it was actually next on my list. You actually used a term in your highlight reel that I hadn't quite heard before, but it was used enough that I'm like, well, yeah, that and that's what we should refer to it. And you were talking about Emmy matching, matching mm. my Emmy, uh, you know, the matching of the timelines, because, of course, you know, people were still mired in this 3D thinking of mis mis memory and everything. But we know that the timelines cross and you may match with some people on some events and, and other things on others. So I like here learning about that term, Emmy matching. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, I was talking, uh, that was Eva from Once Upon a Timeline that we were discussing that, how um, the term timeline, which I've discussed with Cynthia Sue Larson, doesn't really seem to fit what's happening. I mean, it's an easy way to talk about it, of course, you know, because you can say this timeline or that timeline. But when you really dive in deep, you know, you would expect that, you know, you would have everything match with somebody and you could say, oh, you're from my galaxy, you're from my timeline. But it's just always a combination of things that, you know, it's just, and it, which leads me to believe it's more of like a consciousness soup, you know, where yeah. one little thing can change in the soup for you, but not for somebody else. Yeah. So cool. And, and you actually had a clip in your high, your highlight reel is, was stellar, but I had so many questions after watching it. I'm like, that's perfect. I'm going to ask <laughs> all of these questions. So you were there uh, talking with Sherry and, and about an Emmy uh, Daniel's song and that was a new one for me and it happened like just right then for all of you and when I heard that I'm like are you kidding me I mean it was another big one for me that that song is so etched in my DNA yeah and I've heard and seen that it has changed in that way why don't you tell everyone the the line that that shifted yeah it was from Elton John's song Daniel uh, of course we were there I rode with her so we we traveled there together and that morning uh we had stopped and she had started playing and she goes oh it's after midnight it's uh my brother's birthday of course he passed away when he was four so she always listens to that Daniel song every year and she was listening to it that morning. But then when we almost got to the event, she started playing it again. And she was like, did you hear that? And she rewound it. And she goes, it says faith in the sky instead of face in the sky. It, it clearly said face before. And even the lyrics, you look it up and it says face in the sky, but he says faith in the sky. And, you know, both of our jaws dropped and she, you know, we're going to this Mandela Effect conference and she gets her little Mandela Effect sign from her brother who passed away years ago. 
And it was just a really touching moment. It's hard not to have tears come to your eyes when these things happen because you can really feel that connection with the divine, the higher realms, which mm -hmm. happens a lot in BQH sessions, of course. But, sure. you know, just the Mandela effect hit you like that. And it's just such a beautiful thing. That's why I wanted to have her on there to talk about it because they do happen on an individual level as well. And you can, some of them like that one that you you were familiar with it. So it's it makes it to where you can share it with other people and they can enjoy the uh, excitement of it too. So I always encourage people not to feel fearful about this when you first come across it because it can be paradigm shifting for you it can rattle your cage a little bit but once you see that it's all all right it's really gentle changes and nobody's really forced to see it and people can write it off as misremembering or memory issues and things like that so i feel like it's a very gentle wake-up call it, it was for me um and it's really led me to where i am right now yeah i love that about you because you were the first person i knew that woke up with Mandela effect. Um, you know, f my experience was a lot of other things. A lot of it was um, direct experiences, particularly in sessions, um, you know, paranormal events, and th those kinds of things. And the Mandela effect came later. One of my biggest, biggest wake up calls was, you know, um, uh, crisis actors. And, and that one, even though I was already awake, it was like, that was like somebody taking my shoulders and shaking me hard. I remember I, I wasn't even far from the, this house where I am right now. So I'd even been doing this work for several years, but I actually sat in my driveway and I cried. I really, yeah. God, I could almost cry right now, remembering it, thinking about it, that, that we would actually, that humanity actually would participate in, in, you know, in that way. Not that all disasters are completely staged or anything, but, but that it's, it, it's at least bolstered that way. Mm -hmm. uh, if not uh, more than we can imagine, was so much of a shock to my psyche. And that was after years and years and hundreds of, of quantum healing sessions. Yeah. So how crazy is that? That was like, a, so that's, you know, another layer of the onion that, that peels away and goes, you think you know, <laughs> you think you know what's going on here. Which brings me actually to my next question. You, in your highlight reel, again, you talked about revelations and it it seems like you were talking about and maybe even for the others there that um your idea of, of of all of this is sort of expanding and i like the way you've termed it already a gentle awakening but those of you who've been studying this and are paying attention it's getting deeper it's getting bigger in what way what can what can you share with with our listeners, how that's expanding and getting deeper for you? Well, for me at first, it was just, I was just sort of shocked by the changes and looking into them. And, you know, whenever you see a flip-flop when something changes and then changes back and it really forces you to look at it, you know, like for me, it was uh, um, Houston, we have a problem, had changed to Houston, we've had a problem. So I started looking at it and I was like looking into it and I was listening to the clip and I'm like, you know, I'm just not sure. And, but I'd spent a lot of time considering it, but then it changed back and you could still see these message boards where people were arguing that it has always been Houston. We've had a problem yet. It had changed back to the original one and you could find all these weird anomalies around this whole change. But I had looked at it so closely and considered it so hard that when it switched back, there was just no doubt left in my mind that it really changed, you know, the same way with the Flintstones being the Flintstones for a while without a T or with just one T and then changing back to the Flint stones. And uh, so when you see something go one way and the other, it, it really can capture your attention and make you realize that there's no way that this is just, you know, misremembering because right. I remember really looking at it and wondering and pondering and sort of being on the fence at the end of it, like, I just can't be sure. But then once it switches, you know, so yeah. I was, I was totally looking at changes at first, but then I started saying like, what if they're, they're telling us something? So I started taking a deeper look at each of the changes. And then that's when I was sort of led to, um, it was sort of like with the thinker, for instance, he's been shifted completely to his left side. He used to have his fist to his forehead, like looking, you know, with his mind's eye, with his third eye. But now it had moved to under his chin. Now he's like sucking on his knuckles. It's changed twice. And um, but he's twisted and he's all on to the left side. And I felt like I was being shown that society had gone wrong by moving more to the left brain and forgetting, you know, the divine feminine, the creative part, the right brain. All, you know, and even school is all geared to left brain activities. There's hardly much in the 
the, the way of arts and stuff like that, which is more right brain. So then that's one of the things that Lauren uh, Canal Pavelka came on after me and she'd come up with the same thing. Now we hadn't checked notes or anything, but we, she felt like it was saying this left brain, right brain thing too. And that we need this balancing. We need the divine feminine to come back in because that's where all the nurturing, the whole problem with, you know, all the wars and problems like this is because we're too heavy on the left masculine side not that we don't need it but there needs to be balance in there to really bring in the nurturing side the feminine side the creativity the service to others all of that's connected with the divine feminine side which has been neglected and suppressed and you know when we can see that uh once all of this gets balanced out the world would be a much much better place yeah oh gosh what a beautiful <laughs> what a beautiful way of encapsulating um that deepening way of that deeper way of looking at it. When you talked about the switching, I remember there was one rabbit hole I found myself jumping into where I guess there was some message boards somewhere where some people were in real time talking about and, and they were they were pulling and opening up windows and uh, taking screenshots. And I don't remember if it was Looney Tunes or what, but while they were in mid conversation, a group of people the screens refreshed like this and it all changed while they were watching it. And that was pretty, you know, mind blowing. And I started thinking about, and again, your way of describing it, this gentle way. Well, even somebody who's been looking at it for a while, if you are watching your computer and your screens refresh and it flips right as you are looking at it, you know, it makes me wonder things like one of my biggest things was Chick-fil-A because I remember just staring at that sign saying, who would ever call a sandwich chic? It's crazy. You know, it's absolutely insane. What marketing team thought that was good? And I remember just staring at it and I'd never eaten at one, but I was in a parking lot looking at one for the longest time waiting for somebody. And I, I kept thinking when I was reading this flipping as you're watching it, do we have any reports of those kinds of things happening? Actual, not, not on the computer, but I'm standing in a parking lot looking at a sign and it's one way and I blink and then it's another way. I haven't heard of any of those yet. Have you? Well, let's see. Um, there's an instance that I've, I've re heard this reported. I've experienced it myself, but uh, from other people as well. Walking through the store, you look over at the Febreze bottle and it's like spelled the right way, the way it used to be spelled, like Breeze, B-R-E-E-Z-E. -E. Um, and then you look away and you do a double take and you look back and one of the E's disappear and it's back to Febreze again or Febreze, you know, where it's F-E-B-R-E-Z-E -E, with one of the E's gone and no longer the word Breeze in there. And, you know, for many people, we all remember or most people remember the Breeze, you know, because that was sort of the, the, the cleverness in the name, kind of like Looney Tunes, you know, having cartoons in there so those things stick out to you but yeah i've had it where you'll look at something and it'll switch back and i've wondered i'm like is your mind just because it knows what it should look like is it it, it happens so quickly that you know you can't really put your finger on it but other little strange things like vehicles disappearing and things like this have been happening i've had it happen twice now where a vehicle will just vanish and it's like it's not even there one night i was on the highway and it passed me and it had been raining. It wasn't raining at that moment, but the roads were wet enough that cars were leaving mist like behind them. And this car disappeared, no mist, no nothing, just like it wasn't there. And I was like, what the heck, you know, where did that car go? And another time my wife was with me, a, a white pickup truck just disappears. We both had, she had looked down at her phone. I had looked the other way to check for traffic. Then I started to pull out because I looked back and there was nothing there and there was nowhere it could have went. And then she like, you know, she felt me pulling out when she knew the truck was there and she like kind of like, you know, cringed a little bit and she's like, where'd that truck go? And I'm like, I thought I saw a truck too. I don't know where it went, you know? So a lot of weird anomalies happening like that. So things are shifting. Um, I had another time where I saw a kid on a bike in the reflection of a storefront, but the kid wasn't in front of there. It was like reflecting a different dimension or something. Now, how weird is that? You know? And That's I think a lot of things happen like that, that we just don't believe can happen. So we just write it off because I think, you know, five years ago, I, I, if I'd seen something like that, I just wouldn't have noticed. Right. You know, 
Right. I, I think this is expanding our minds and where we're really stepping into that label of multidimensionality. And I want to thank you for catching one of my consciousness stream lives where I was sitting in a truck and talking about some of this, but I went down another rabbit hole about objects and, and the duplication now sometimes of objects. And the, the one story that affected me the most, I didn't write down this specific details, but I believe it was a little wooden toy that somebody had. And it, the little toy meant something to them and it just disappeared and they didn't worry about it. And then someday or another day it showed up, but it was a different age. It was like, you know, a much newer toy than the older scuffed up toy that that they had lost, but it was in the place where that one was lost. And then there's some other stories of, of both of those things, like both of the objects that are different ages and have different wear patterns on them, show up at the same time in the same place. And that makes me wonder too about this expansion thing. Do we start with these little things and are more and more things going to happen as we as humans are able to kind of accept this and not be afraid? Yeah, I think so. I think it, it does sort of get introduced. It's sort of like, you know, when they say, uh, I'll see it when I, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. It's really the other way around. I'll see it when I believe it. It's like the more you realize these things are even possible, the more you'll take note of that because that instinct could have happened. You would have thought, oh, some other kid must have brought an exact duplicate of this toy around that was a little bit younger. And you would have come up with some sort of very in very possible way to explain what happened. And we do that a lot. We'll write things off or as bad memory or, you know, something very natural happening, but it's only when you really get in there that you see that impossible things or seemingly impossible things do happen quite a bit. Yeah, they do. Uh, that makes me think of a, a experience I had when I was in graduate school and I was in a tool room, a power tool room. And I was babysitting the tools and it was like on a Friday and in college. And of course, none of the college kids are there on a Friday night doing their homework. They're all out doing what college kids do on Friday night. But it was still my job to be there on Friday night to make sure no one, you know, sliced their hands off. So I was in there just fine studying very quiet. And this dude walks in and I remember thinking, I've never seen you before. And you're kind of you kind of dressed strange. And I'm watching him and he walks down this wooden um, ramp that was over these steps and it was a ramp because there was ceramics and people pushed carts and and there was this certain sound that this wooden ramp would make when anyone would go down because it didn't quite fit on it go it went doom, doom. you would always hear doom, doom, coming down those stairs and he came down and he was coming towards me and the first thing I noticed was where was the sound like I always hear the sound right but he's the solid guy coming towards me he passes me goes straight over like to the table saw and I'm like hey dude and i and i'm standing up and i'm following him and i go into like this back room and the back room is very small and there's just a few pieces of equipment there the floor is concrete and i'm i'm two feet behind him and he just disappears and and i didn't freak out as a matter of fact it's very interesting how the human brain works i spent the next five 15 minutes looking behind the table saw over and over again. You know, there's only one way in and one way out of this room. I found myself on my hands and knees on the concrete floor, like there's a trap door here. Yeah. And, and the, the, the thing about, the interesting thing about watching your mind try to grasp for explanations that just are cray cray, um, you understand how the human mind, it's trying to protect you, right? Yeah, it's it like, you know, it's okay. There's, there's a logical explanation for this. You don't have to be afraid because people do freak out or, or they can't freak out. Um, so I think we're all kind of being, you know, uh, we're moving, we're changing, we're expanding in, into this place where maybe these things won't freak us out some more. I'd like to switch gears right now, though, and ask you if you have, and if any of your colleagues have, and forgive me, I haven't completely gone through the Mandela Effect book, I skipped ahead to your chapter and read it, uh, but I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, but maybe some people in the conference or other people you've talked to, how often does, I know CERN comes up sometimes, but lately, and I watched just yesterday, uh, a podcast about Project Looking Glass 
um, the fellow who puts out the channel where we go one, we go all. I don't know if you know that guy. Uh, he, he goes down some really deep rabbit holes and he has some nice production values. But he captured a lot of information about Project Looking Glass that was really compelling and it was really interesting and made you know, a, a variation of the argument about why we're seeing crazy stuff like this with timelines and makes you wonder if all of this is happening only this time, you know, during our lifetimes, if it's happened the whole time through humanity and we're just waking up to it, or if really some of these project looking glass, you know, star portal objects, machines, if they are part of any of the answer to this or what do you think? Well, for me, because I that one of the first places I was really super left brain when I came across the Mandela effect. That's how it, it pushed me back to my right brain is what I feel like, especially when I felt like the messages were talking about that. So it, it really opened me up to the metaphysical, the spiritual, the supernatural, the magical, if you know, in a good way, you know. And um, so I think a lot of times if you're really left brain, you're really like, oh, A plus B equals C type of person. It's got to be, you got to be able to fit it into an equation. You're very analytical about it. And, um, you know, CERN or D-Wave or some of these are great to sort of match up with that because you can sort of say, oh, it's probably D-Wave computers. And then you can set it to the side, not look at it, but they're dead ends. I mean, one, once I kind of, I was like, well, what if it's CERN or what if it's D-Way? What am I going to do with that? All I can really do is put it on the shelf and move on and look at some other things because I'm not going to go and tear apart the D-Wave computer and try to see what's making it tick or go to CERN and say, what are you guys up to? So for me, it was a dead end, but I found out it was sort of a left brain cop out in a way too, because it allows you to sort of pair up these two mysterious things that, you know, you don't understand what they're doing at CERN and you don't understand the Mandela effect. Let's just put them together. They, they seem to match and we can set it off to the side and go on with our life, you know? So for me, I didn't want that to happen. I wanted to look in deeper and say, well, since I can't do anything with that, let's look at some other things. And that led me to looking at more supernatural things. But I saw the video you're talking about, uh, if it was the one with a Project Camelot um, interview where- It did have part of that in there. So a very long clip of it, actually. I think it pretty much started uh with Right. I love that because they, they, I guess this guy worked for the government and, you know, they hired him to come fix this problem they were having with their project looking glass because they wouldn't tell him what it was, but around 2012, um, you know, there was some sort of event. Well, he ends up disclosing that he thinks it's the great awakening of humanity and that it's not the end of the world, but it's the end of their world. And, you know, it's funny if you look up the word apocalypse, if you just Google apocalypse, um, it will say some end of the world cataclysm. It sounds really fearful, right? And But right under that, it says, what does apocalypse really mean? And then you click on that and it says a revealing, um, a revelation. It's not anything scary at all. It's like talking about the valve dropping or the valve coming down or thinning and the truth all coming out. And that's what this, you know, the controllers of this realm, if you want to call them that, are afraid of. They're afraid of all their, their secrets coming out. Like Jesus said, the things whispered in the inner room yeah. would be shot at from the rooftops. And I think that's where we're at right now. And that's why we're seeing this revelation of so much information. And one of the problems was merging of the timelines is how he, he called it. And what we're seeing would fit that description of merging of the timelines, people coming back to life that people had thought had passed away or people that you've never heard of, like Cynthia Sue Larson, so many people had never heard of her that would have heard of her, um, you know, because she's like working in their field, but yet, she just pops on the scene around 2010 for them, you know? So I think that sort of fits this idea of, of all possibilities sort of, sort of merging together in one grand possibility of us all waking up, you know, which I love that. I love that a lot too. And actually I just happened to, because I started feeling Dolores's presence here. And so I clicked over on the chat and I see Ian actually asked me as Candace asked Dolores anything about Emmy and I'm, I'm feeling her like chuckle here. It, Dolores has a famous quote where she said, You're, we are living in the most um, you know, important uh, time in the history of the universe. And, and she's chuckling about that too, because you know, in her perspective, even when she was alive, it's like, well, which, which one do you want to live in? You actually, you actually have power, you have a choice, right? So as, as an example, and actually I see our 
wonderful mutual friend, Michelle Walling is here too. Hi, Michelle. Um, so you can focus on, you know, our realities. Michelle did a great video, I think once where she was talking about reality bubbles and then sometimes they, uh, they cross and sometimes they're separate, et cetera. And Dolores is very famous. A lot of our listeners may know this or may not know this. I, you know, I spent every minute I could with that woman. And in some of the conferences, she would get a lot of the same questions over and over again. And even back then, she was asked about chemtrails a lot. And she would look over and I would always, I would hear her sigh and, and she would say, I don't pay any attention to those. And she didn't even really want to talk about it. Sometimes she would say another sentence or two about it. This is how it worked in Dolores Cannon's mind, which is sure she knew what they were. Sure, um, that reality exists. She wasn't very interested in participating in that reality. So she didn't study it. She didn't look at it. She didn't rub her hands about it and worry about it because she knew for her and the way her reality worked was to focus on a reality where that didn't really matter. So she would say it and she would just sort of go like this. Well, you get people who then might say, well, you're just putting your head in the sand. What about things like child abuse and the whole pedophilia thing? You know, so there's a lot of very interesting conversations around here, important ones that have to do with how this works. But it's my feeling, my sense, and the way I like to live my life is I still focus on the stuff that I want to see bloom and grow in my world. And am I aware of those other things? Well, yeah, um, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to try to give it a lot of energy, which doesn't mean denial. Uh, just try not to, you know. Uh, spend so much time watering the things you don't want to see grow. So, so that's yeah, it's our like that. where attention goes, energy flows, as they say. So I, I always recommend to people because they'll bring up these same types of things too. I'm like, if it's not within your sphere of influence, if you're not, if you can't do anything, like if you see a child being abused, of course you want to step up and do oh, something course. about it. Yeah. But if you're just hearing about rituals going on, you don't know where these secret meanings are even being held. You know not, nothing about it then it does you no good to sit there and dwell and think about that because you are, you're putting energy into something, into something you don't want. And it's not sticking your head in the sand, not to yeah. focus on it because you can know about something and then not focus on it. Cause I know about so many different things going on that's outside of what I can even affect. So, and there's enough channels out there raising awareness about those things. So I don't need to focus on that. It's handled, you know? So I always tell people if it's within your sphere of influence, do something about it. If it's outside of that, then you're doing it no good, but distracting yourself from doing, you know, creating the reality you want, you know? That's a really concrete, wonderful, practical piece of advice when it comes to that. I've got another kind of example there from my own perspective is, is this, and that's kind of animal abuse. I do, everyone who knows me knows how, how much I love animals and how much I spend my life taking care of them and being their champion in my, in my own realm. When I see people sharing pictures of animal abuse and they do it under the guise of trying to spread awareness, I find that so misguided. So, because what happens, you can't unsee that horror when, when that shows up mm. in your newsfeed or your scroll or whatever. And what you do, that body reaction that I know that I have when I see something absolutely horrible like that, that produces this terrible, negative, painful thing that just participates and perpetuates the problem. I know that there's animals and people and all kinds of other uh, wonderful creatures and life forms being abused out there, but being assaulted with that ugly image and adding to the misery does not help at all. And in, and in many ways, and in the way I feel about it, does the exact opposite of what you want does the exact opposite. And those kind of people, I make sure <laughs> I push aside from my, from my own reality experience because I, I don't need to hear that. One of the things that you said just a couple minutes ago really struck me as well. And our friends at It's You Guru were talking about this too. And that is the, the real exposure of hidden agendas now. Uh, the hidden agendas are long for this world. And I think that 2020 
is going to shine some big giant spotlights into some very dark corners of the world across the table in all kinds of ways and in ways that gosh, we may not even be ready for, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of, we, you know, those of us who are talking about all of this think, well, come on with it already. It's still going to be hard, everybody. It's still going to be hard. People who, you know, because here's the deal. You can see the hidden agendas sometimes, but you don't see all of them. And then you see another one. And then, then you might feel hopeless, like, does everybody have one? You know, is everybody this way? And, and then, no, that's, that's just not true. Because, because then we have things like your event where you step into that room at the Mandela Effect Conference. I had a, a retreat that happened in the Ozarks a few weeks ago. And every single person there, you know, their hearts and just being there. And it was so nourishing just being there and knowing that, that these people, they're, they're, they're part of this great grand awakening that's so heart focused and positive that we've got to be winning. And I know Dolores says we are, we have been for a long time. It, it just, it's just playing out now. And each one of you, you know, whether you have a YouTube channel or not, are participating by what you focus on, what you think about, um, what are your hopes and your dreams, you are helping to create this simply with your own energy, whether or not you are creating content to be viewed on social media or not more and more every day, huh, Shane? Oh, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, and this really gets back to like, uh, like what Allison Co had done the video about the, the flash and the event happening. And it was shown to me later because I've had similar uh, sessions where they see this flash and everything and then I thought about how our sun's changed and how it used to be yellow and now it looks white and then I thought about how slow things move on the cosmic scale and you've only got so long in a session so how can you possibly show the sun change and this grand shift and this grand awakening you've got to speed it up so of course it's going to look like a flash when you see two decades within a couple of seconds, you know, and we've seen this happen with our son. We know we're in the middle of this and people will just discount the information. Well, the, the flash isn't going to happen. It's like we're in the flash. It's <laughs> flashing right now. We see the things are changing. And I think it's getting harder and harder to deny that even for, you know, the, the common folk that's just trying to work and pay their bills and just play by the rules and all that. I, everybody's seeing it. If, if they, anybody that opens their eyes to this can see that we're in the middle of something that's grand. Yeah, you know, often in sessions, you will, you will hear the higher selves of clients say, you are so lucky, you know, even people who have come to you and are dealing with some huge crisis or feel that they're really miserable, you know, the, the higher aspect of it all says, my God, you want a lottery ticket to be here. You, <laughs> you really you stood in line. You were one of the lucky ones who are here at this time. Even if your life is tough or short or filled with misery, to to be here, witness to to what's going on here, uh, you know, it's quite a little perk for your uh, your soul's experience. I know that I felt that way for a very long time. I'm wondering a little bit about some uh, timeline things going on or some time travel things going on. You know, I've been a person who has completely stayed away from politics. I I. The last time I voted, I think my, one of my kids was in diapers, right? And I'm a grandma now. I mean, the whole thing just went, oh my God, I can't handle it because I'm not interested in arguing, not interested in debate, none of that. It's, I'm right, you're wrong, this, that, blah, blah. I wanted nothing to do with it. So when a, a few things have happened with other clients, I won't quite kind of bring that up right now, but I will mention a dream that I had, and I'm not sure I've mentioned this publicly yet. I may have, but I don't know. I'll mention it to you though, because I think it's interesting. Um, I had a dream and it wasn't too long ago, maybe a couple weeks, maybe even less. I actually dreamed about our president, which is cray cray, right? Just, just nuts. I'm like, and, and it was a fairly lucid dream and it was at my dad's house, right? And I'm walking into the living room and I sit down in, on the sofa and he walks in and he sits down and he's looking at me and he kind of folds his hands and I'm feeling like, oh, I'm supposed to be interviewing him. And I'm looking like, do, am, I, am I doing a YouTube? I, you know what? I mean, I'm sort of, I'm sort of lucid, but I don't know what's going on. He was pleasant or whatever. And I looked at him and what 
suddenly, and some of this was telepathic now, but he was, he was starting to tell me how, um, that he had traveled back into time from the future to help create the reality that we're all moving into. And when he's like telling me this, he's downloading some images towards me and he kind of almost morphs. And the crazy thing is he morphs into this being who is actually in his, I don't know, early thirties, maybe late twenties, this tall, lanky dude with blue eyes and kind of dark hair. And this is his, at this physical aspect of him who lives far into the future, right? But what he has done is figured out or is or is part of or whatever in my dream, you know, so take this with a grain of salt, who knows what this means, but that he um, is gone back into time or re decided to reanimate one of his own soul aspects, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the soul who lives all these different lifetimes, right? So this is one aspect was this really young, pretty hot, actually, dude, <laughs> from the future. And then, you know, our orange Mr. President Trump sitting on my dad's sofa. And I'm, I'm like, what? But he was talking about um, how absolutely wonderful it was uh, that things were going to plan and that the surprises had only just begun. If we thought that we didn't know what was going on and that the surprises we're like, are you kidding me? And we're all, you know, pulling our hair out and watching and listening to all of the crazy yelling and the noise and the, and the insistence, you know, isn't that interesting? You know, how some people with the Mandela effect, they insist that they're, they are right. And these people insist that they are right. And politics can be that way too. And, and I had all of these questions and the dream, you know, ended, faded right then and there. And I have no idea what any of that was about, but it has stuck with me. I mean, it has really stuck with me. And I tell you why too, because I've had clients who also completely out of the blue have had some political, let's say information just drop into their sessions. And, and I'm telling you, every single one of these people are like, I'm so not political. I don't pay any attention to any of that. And they are being given some nuggets to some of what is going on, which I think is just fascinating. Did anything about world events come up uh, in the Mandela Effect conference? Hmm. Well, other than just sort of uh, ambiguous sort of great awakening, which I, that's funny that he uses that term too, the, or they do on the, the Reddit, the great awakening, the calm before the storm and all of that. But I think, you know, it's it's probably delivered to non-political people because politics and religion and taking on different worldviews just biases you so much. It's hard to see things clearly when you invest so hard into something, you know, even like, you know, not being political. I'm watching this whole thing play out with Trump. And, you know, they started this whole last thing with the impeachment and stuff while he's doing this. Uh, this UN thing in New York, you know, and I'm just like I said, I'm, I'm not political. So I'm watching from the outskirts of it. And I'm like, gosh, that just reminded me of like, when you're up in school, and you're trying to give a report, and there's like some kids in the back that's trying to distract you from something and just, it seems so adolescent the way they were, you know, going about it at a time when he's like meeting with these world leaders. And I'm like, gosh, it's so where's the etiquette involved with politics? Right. I mean, is it no kind of sense of, you know, I don't know, it's like when me and my sister would fight, if somebody like picked on her or something, we immediately forgot our fight and then like we're taken up for each other, you know, if something like that. But there's nothing like that. There's no loyalty as an American. And I'm looking at all this and then it almost appears like, you know, they're worried about this upcoming election. So they're trying to win a different way. And I'm like watching this whole thing play out. And, you know, it's funny. There's this video. You can look it up on YouTube. It's by this prophet named Kim Clement. And there's uh, somebody's put a, a bunch of little clips together, but he's been talking about Trump being president since like, oh, seven or oh, five or all the clips were from different years. But he's been dead for, I don't know, a few years now, the Kim Clement guy. And he's even he's talking about they're going to try to imp impeach him. This guy's going to be fearless. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, he totally nailed how Trump is now. You know, it's like this modern day Christian prophet guy or whatever. So I don't know. I, I think um, I've had people leave the channel before just because I, I even consider Trump might be 
um, work in a positive way towards this whole grand awakening? You know, not saying he was, just saying that in my mind, it's a possibility. <laughs> you know, it's Why like, not? I mean, you've got to be open to everything, right? I mean, right. I, am, I think. And, you know, I, forgive me for being so optimistic that I think that, you know, God, source, whatever you want to call it, can work through anyone, anybody can, even if he's been bad up to this point, maybe he can have it change overnight. I don't know his heart or anything like that, but I'm always looking to the most optimal, uh, positive outcome. And I totally see he could, you know, he's totally in a position where, you know, of course he's president for free because he's, he doesn't need the money. Right. You know, he doesn't need to rely if he's not part of the elite, which I know people, some people say he is, but what if he's got his own money? He's got his own, you know, uh, kingdom of money and he doesn't need the support of, uh, you know, the elites that are running the world like previous presidents have. He'd be the perfect person to step in and do something. Yeah. So I haven't had any specific things, but just my uh, unbiased and on the fence ob observations of this president, I can totally see him stepping in and doing some great things. Yeah. I think that's great. I'm I'm so happy to to hear people be you know neutral, hopeful, and positive about the whole really kind of nasty situation out there. I have one last thing I would like for you to tell me about the Mandela Effect uh, conference. Somebody talked about by location, a by location event occurring. What happened there? And do you think the whole thing was inspired by all of the energy or what? Can you give us a little more story about that? Yeah. So there was a lady and her son that was just an attendee and uh, another lady that was an attendee. And the one lady had gone back to her room and she was sort of in this state of state daydream and thinking about the lady and her son that she had met. And I guess for the lady and her son, they were actually talking in person but the other lady from her point of view was in her room. So it was like they had this conversation, the lady in her room just sort of daydreamed it. And the other two people saw her there talking with them. They had two separate events going on. Now this actually leads back to, for me anyway, Jesus would do this sort of bilocating thing. When he was rounding up his disciples, one of them came and he said, oh, I saw you under the fig tree or something like that. You know, And it was clear that he had been with the other disciples, but in his mind, he went and saw this other guy and there was this bi-locating thing. So I think it's just like little hints that, you know, like we were saying earlier, we're, we get these little breadcrumbs that let us know of new abilities that's going to be coming online. I know, I don't know for you, but I know that the telepathy has been off the chain. It's easy to miss it because you can think, oh, wow, that's weird that they were talking about that. I was just thinking that. But when you look at it a little bit deeper, you're like, wow, wait a minute, that they pick up on me thinking about it or did I pick up on them thinking about it? When you look a little deeper at this stuff, it really starts to look like abilities are coming online for us and we're just not even noticing, you know? I think you're right. And, you know, and think about, um, it has to be, it almost has to be gradual, right? Because what if, what if your consciousness could even hold, hold the fact that you are in two places at once doing two things at once, you know? Yeah. That, think about that can get very confusing and <laughs> yeah, for but, sure. you know, maybe we're doing that anyway and we're just you know we're opening up to it to to step into it and you know and and I, i've said this often before but the people who step into it too quickly a lot of them are medicated or in our uh, mental institutions and it it can be very difficult for them of course and their families so yeah, I kind of like this gradual stuff, don't you? It's a lot of fun. It's like it's like being on a great grand adventure, isn't it? It is. It it does seem like it goes slow at times, but when you think of the alternative, yeah, it could be overwhelming if all of a sudden you start hearing everybody around you. We've seen movies where things like that happen, you know, and they're like, "Oh, just shut up. I can't stop hearing everybody." And they're freaking out. So I think it's a good thing that it's sort of being eased in. I think it's um, enough for us to start playing with it a little bit. You know, I, and I even do that with my kids. I'll say, all right, I'm thinking of a colored shape, you know, and, you know, they'll get it sometimes. And you think about, you know, it'd be like a yellow star or a green square. I'll just think of something simple, you know, but um, a lot of times I'll imagine one of those little candy land cards and I'm imagining looking at it and you'd be surprised how many times they'll be like blue circle. I'm like, that's exactly what I was thinking, you know, so we try both ways. And I think, you know, the more we play with it, the more we'll get better at it and realize when we are picking up something from someone else. And um, I think being present has really helped me um, with that, because once you're present, you can sort of realize even your own thoughts, 
what thoughts of the collective you're sort of hearing in your head. What are your own thoughts? Because a lot of times we'll associate with our thoughts like that's us, but we're really the one observing the thoughts that's going through our head. When you can yeah. take that step back and be in the moment, pay attention, uh, just attention to what you're thinking about, um, you can start distinguishing what is your own thoughts, what might you be picking up from the collective and so forth. So. Well, thanks so much, Shane. And thanks for joining me today and catching me and everybody else up who's who's watching right now. And I want to thank all of the, the live listeners and watchers, Jolie especially. Jolie, you're always hopping on and, and saying wonderful things. And she's got the best, most wonderful smile I've ever known in my life. And my beautiful colleague and friend, Jolie James, so many others of you as well. So happy to see Michelle Walling uh, pop in. Awesome. Let's do it again. Sometime. Lots of love, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I love catching up with you. And <laughs> just to let you all know, of course, the Beyond Quantum Healing course is still available. Head on over to quantumhealers.com. You can click on the tab about BQH or you can find a quantum healer to take you on an incredible um, journey within your own consciousness. And there's a lot of new people who are still practicing and you might get quite a deal on on a practice session from them some of them are still doing them for free so uh, that's all from us today shane thank you so much i'll put your links at the bottom thank you so much for the wealth of information and goodwill and uh, wonderful experiences you had to share with us today my pleasure thank you for having me candace bye everybody happy friday happy weekend love you to all bye bye